This is Mert Kılıç. I'm 22 years old. I'm an actor from Istanbul, Turkey. I study media and visual arts in Koç University in Istanbul. And it's interesting for me to be here. I think it's going to be my first podcast I ever made. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. I'm open to different kind of projects. For example, I, I never thought of doing podcasts, but I'm happy that you reached me out yeah. and we're collaborating together. Yeah. I'm looking for some passionate people who are willing to do some, you know, passionate projects around these times because we're at our houses and we're not able to go out much. Yeah. But, but it's still important to improve ourselves and make a network connections. Yeah. So, yeah. And I would like to meet with different kinds of people in Istanbul who are willing to film, make or photo shoot, I don't know, yeah. podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now is it, tell me what, like, tell me what's going on in Istanbul since I've been here such a, a short time. Tell me what's going on, like, as far as the film industry is concerned. And then kind of tell me how that relates to you. Like, are you struggling to get, I know that we have COVID. Are you struggling to get parts uh, due to COVID? How was it prior to COVID? I must say that uh, the industry is going well, actually, rather than uh, other countries. I think it's going well because, uh, you know, Turkey is the second lead in the world, like uh, we, like which country exporting the TV shows to the world. And I think there are currently like 100 TV shows oh, really? shooting around these times. Uh, but I can't say the same for the film industry because... Yeah. You know, the movie theaters are not open and mm. people are um, not benefiting from making movies. Instead of that, they're mo movie making TV shows for the digital platforms or TV shows. So it's going well, actually. But for me, uh, I think it's kind of getting better because there are a lot of auditions that I get. And I'm going for a lot of parts these days for auditions, of course. But like, um, I can say that um, uh, the quality is not much good yet. Okay. Because the industry is about to change. Yeah. I don't know if you have seen if you have seen any Turkish TV shows. They're too long. <laughs> one of the most, like, yeah, one you're, of the most. <laughs> you're talking about on the Turkish television, or are you talking about like Netflix? No, no, on the television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see mostly soap operas. I don't, I haven't yes. watched any uh, yeah. Turkish movies. So what, every episode is longer than two and a half hours. Really? And the people have to shoot it in six days. It's incredible. Yeah. So there's a lot of struggling and rushing going on during the sets and shootings. So the quality is not much higher uh, when we compare with the digital platforms. Uh, Netflix got into Turkey like two years ago and after that some different kind of digital projects started going on in Turkey mm -hmm. so the, the industry is changing and evolving into something different I can't say it has a rhyme mm -hmm. but it's uh, I'm happy that something is changing and a new kind of contents are uh, trying being being prepared for Turkey yeah, yeah. Because in Turkish TV shows, we always see the same stories, you know, yeah. same kind of um, soap operas. But for the digital platforms, people would like to see different kind of things, sci-fi uh, shows or fantastic uh, mm. shows. Mm. Yes. So have you watched any of the stuff that's on Netflix? Yes, I have seen The Protector. Okay. I have seen The Gift. Uh, I have seen Law 101. I was auditioned for that Netflix oh, okay, show. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. For example, um, I wasn't born into. Uh, I wasn't born in Istanbul. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, I was born in Gaziantep, which is a smaller city than Istanbul. It's in the south east of Turkey, and it's. I wouldn't say it's a small city, but it's definitely there are less to do rather than Istanbul, and my world is uh, was small there yeah. but the uh, only thing made my world uh, larger was, was the movies yeah i was like into movies so much 
that I keep my, you know, uh, daily pocket money in my school. Mm -hmm. I didn't spend it, but I rather after the school, I went to the DVD store and bought some. Oh, really? You know, and for a little child, there are not much to do in that city. So I was watching a lot of movies to get into those uh, characters worlds. Mm -hmm. It was really threatening for me. Then when I was in high school, um, suddenly I was watching like uh, some movies, you know, some good movies, some Tom Hanks movies. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I realized that I would like to do this job okay. because I was so impressed uh, how they uh, impressed me. Like they, they did the movie like 15 or 20 years ago and they, they impressed me so much. And I realized that they're doing something international yeah so i decided that i have to do this okay. job mm -hmm. and i decided to move to istanbul okay it was hard to convince my parents firstly because i was only 15. oh really okay but i was sure enough of myself that i convinced them and i came to istanbul to be an actor at 15. yes oh wow yes so have you had a chance to like being anything like stage play or anything on television yet? Uh, yes, uh, I did a small TV show uh, in Turkey called Crime File. Okay. okay. Uh, and uh, I did a short movie this year. It's called Snapshot. Okay. Uh, I was the co-lead of a famous actress of Pakistan. Okay. Her name is Armina Rana Khan. And the, the short movie is not released yet but it's going to be ready in a month, I guess. And it's going to be uh, attending to some festivals yeah. in Europe. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't want, don't give me a spoiler, but kind of generally give me what the short film was about. Uh, it was uh, about two stranger people uh, uh, meet in Istanbul after, uh, during the pandemic, but after, you know, there was a certain period of time where every uh, restaurant and cafes were uh, closed mm -hmm. and uh, in in the summer everything is reopened again and it's about two characters after a certain part of uh, quarantine they meet mm -hmm. uh, arminos my co-lead lead actress character is like uh, she's stuck in istanbul during the pandemic and yeah. she recently lost his father and she takes pictures for a magazine in okay. abroad mm -hmm. and i'm i work in a photography shop mm -hmm. which she goes to press his uh, yeah. photos she took mm -hmm. and we meet there we understand that we we have some common things between us i uh, my character did lost his father like five years ago as well and mm -hmm. he understands her uh, and how she uh, feels those times yeah. So they share some something coming. Yes. Wow. Well, sounds like a sounds like a very good uh, film. And how did you how, like? How did that audition process go to get into that film? Uh, um, the director mm -hmm. is called Shahraz Ali. Uh, he's a um, Brit British filmmaker, but she's originally from Pakistan, oh, okay. and uh, he lives here. Uh, in Istanbul, he works for the government channel TRT World. I don't know yes. if you ever. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. familiar. Yes, yes. Yeah, he's a he's a content creator uh, mm -hmm. for TRT World. Yes. Uh, I, I put my profile and my work on the Facebook group that you contacted me. Yeah. And he suddenly texted me and he said he's looking for a co -lead, co lead actor for his new upcoming short film and he did some. Uh, he sent his stuff to me. There was no audition process. Okay. Uh, uh, I but I did some. I did have some showreel in English mm -hmm. to send him. Yes. And I sent him uh, the videos I got, the parts I got, mm -hmm. and he was uh, like uh, convinced in a few days. There was oh, no wow. audition process. Mm -hmm. It was more about uh, the connection we got, how we yeah. understand each other. Yeah. And he told me about the story. I shared my some some ideas of mine he shared his okay. ideas and okay. yeah we understand easily easily understand each other okay wow so it's done in english yeah the... it's done in english but there are a few turkish sentences as well since it's passing in turkey right 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 
So how did how did it feel once you got on set? Like, did it feel magical to you, or oh, it's it, it felt amazing because um, it it's been like a one and a half year that I didn't uh, get into uh, sets and do something in front of camera. It felt amazing after the pandemic, of course, and the the crew we got they worked so professionally. The the crew came from England to do the movie actually and, and they were working so professionally i was amazed by it and they were so friendly as well okay. uh, we got a really good connection and we shoot in different several places in istanbul so yes. it wasn't going in just few uh, locations but it was going all over in anatolian side or european side mm -hmm. in different kinds of places in istanbul it was really nice to do something with um a lot of people and you know yeah, yeah. people from abroad in turkey because okay. you introduce your culture and your city to them as well yeah how many days was the shoot i think we shot uh, the short movie in a week okay all right yes. but it was a pretty busy schedule because armina was here in istanbul for only the short movie yeah. So we were shooting like, I don't know, 10, 10 hours of days or 12 hours of day. Really? Yeah. Every in a week. Yeah. So did you, were you able to look at the script prior to shooting? Yeah. Were, you, were you able Definitely. to study? Okay. Definitely. I got it, got the, the screenplay like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And it's really important for, important for me to rehearse it a lot before I get in front of the camera and discuss with the writer, the director. So I got it like three weeks ago and I started rehearsing it. And a week ago, before we start filming, I met with the director face to face to ask about some scenes on my mind and what he wants to clear out uh, what he wants exactly. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't have much time to rehearse on the set. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to be prepared before okay. the yeah. set. Yeah. So what did you do? What did you do to prepare? Did you did you get a study, a, a partner that you kind of ran your lines with or how did you prepare? Uh, for some scenes, ex uh, actually, I didn't prepare. I just memorized it because for some scenes, exact, uh, I think you don't have to rehearse much. If you got the feeling and if you have the able to ability to understand the scene, uh, I just feel like I have to do it on the set because it's it's about fixing the lines sometimes. Yeah. You feel like a robot, you know? If, if yeah. you rehearse the scene, like some exact lines before mm -hmm. and do it the same in the set, you don't have the emotion, but you have a fixed uh, sentence uh, and lines. Okay, okay, okay. So you wanted so, to be like that moment in time. You wanted to yes. be reactionary. For some scenes, I did that. But mm -hmm. for some scenes, I heard rehearsed a lot with some certain people. I go over the lines many times. And there are some acting methods I do. I uh, rehearsed it with some different kind of methods as well. Mm -hmm. So have you taken classes to become better or have you just done all of this on your own? Um, no, I have been taking a lot of uh, classes actually because acting is like a, a muscle, we say. You have to train it all the time. Even though you become famous and you do some good projects, you have to train it to keep okay. it strong. Okay, okay. So are there are there classes here that are available or...? Uh, there are not much available right now. Actually, there are available, but they're doing it online. Oh, on, on Zoom yes, or yes, Skype or something yes, like that. Yes, yes. Okay. But uh, there are available some right now, but actually we have our own group. We okay. have our mentor. Uh, okay. We're working together, but it's not like uh, some institution. Mm -hmm. We're doing it voluntarily. We're working scenes, study scenes. Now, what, what kind of, what is your favorite movie to try to, to act in? Like, are, do you want to do a sci-fi? Do you want to be in comedy? Like, where do you see yourself? Um, I, 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 I believe that that will be a drama. Okay. Because uh, 
I, I write and drag myself as well, some short movies. Mm -hmm. And I believe that drama is the most uh, powerful uh, content that we, um, that we show to people because yeah. I don't know, uh, I'm looking at uh, some actings and some scenes that really affected me. And it's all, it's all from the drama movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like sci-fi as well yeah. because there are some really uh, inspiring and uh, innovative uh, ideas yeah, yeah. going on the, on the screen, but drama I would say. Okay. So you were saying that you, you've actually written some stuff and you've actually directed some stuff like, yes. Tell me how different that is from acting. Would you say? Um, for acting, um, you're just responsible for your own part, for the character. Yeah. You yeah. have to do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, like what director wants, but for director, you, you are responsible for every little tiny t thing in the movie. Mm -hmm. I don't know who, who was the director, but uh, a director said that uh, the, for the actors, they're just involving in the movie for two months, but I'm involved in the project for two years because yeah. uh, they're, they're, the directors are there for for the writing process, for the uh, pre-production, mm -hmm. for the filming, after the uh, post-production. There are a lot of things going on for director. Mm -hmm. Do you think that being an actor first helped you uh, write stuff? And does it help you when you direct stuff? Um, I think so, because uh, I write, I direct and I uh, act mm -hmm. and it helps me when, when I act, uh, it helps me when I write as well, because I can imagine how, uh, what kind of situations uh, can actor face when reading the script or imagining the world or getting the story mm -hmm. or when I'm directing, it's really easy for me to communicate with the actors. And if they're not in the emotion or in the mood, mm -hmm. it's really uh, helping me to understand how he feels or help him to get better in the movie. Okay. Were, were, you, comf were you comfortable when you're directing? Like, I, I don't know, like for me, I, that like that's not my personality type to like kind of like direct people. I kind of like let mm -hmm. them do their own thing. Um, but were you comfortable in being a director, like telling people what to do? Yes, I think so. Because if I'm getting into some project and I'm directing it, mm -hmm. I have to be sure of myself 100%. Mm -hmm. okay. And if I'm sure of myself 100%, I can uh, tell people what to do, not to order, but tell and convince them. It's about, I think directing is uh, about not to tell people what to do, but convincing them to okay. believe in a story and okay. what to do. Okay. Yeah, so you might you might actually have an advantage then because being an actor first seems like you would be able to say, hey, look, which, which you've already said, I know I'm just repeating what you said, mm -hmm. but it really does seem like you have the ability to go like, no, you know, this is the way I want to see your character play out mm -hmm. on, on, on screen. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, do you have boundaries? And, and when I say boundaries, what I mean is, are there characters you won't play? Like, for example, I know people who won't play a rapist. I know people who won't play, you know, uh, a clown, you know, the certain things. Do you have boundaries on what you will and won't play? I believe that I don't have that kind of uh, prejudgments because okay. uh, an actor shouldn't have that. I think mustn't have that. Okay. You, we, are, we should be able to uh, play every kind of character. Of course, we have some preferences. You might have, but... I won't say I wouldn't do it. Okay, yeah. Now, do you, going back to you shooting movies, do you understand, do you have like control and understanding of like lighting and because directing and cinematography and acting, I think that they're, although they work together, I think they're separate things. Definitely. Are you, that was one of the hardest things for me when I started making film was like the lighting. Do you kind of understand how that, how that works? I think so. I think lighting is one of the key elements of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. It makes your movie, it's the image that people see. So uh, it's basically the quality of the work you got lighting. Mm -hmm. 
so when we make uh, take a look at the directors that we really uh, inspire from, the lighting is always uh, in in the feature. I would say, mm -hmm. for example, Scorsese, the lighting is always getting better in every kind of project he got, and it's the key element I would say. And uh, for the not not the previous, uh, I mean not the current Hollywood movies, but in the previous Hollywood movies, uh, you know Mar Michael Caine. Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I read his book. He he has a book about uh, acting in front of camera and acting in a film, and he say. Um, a, a true uh, lighting operator makes the uh, actor's um, performance better. A absolutely, absolutely. Now, give me an idea of where you want to be at with your career in the next five years. And I understand that, you know, COVID is still, we don't, we don't know what's going to have what happen with COVID, but in five years, tell me kind of like where you want to be. Uh, I will say for Turkey, it's it, the industry is different than other industries in the world, I guess, because for example, in Hollywood, uh, most of the actors that we know now are being uh, famous from the movies, not the TV shows. But in Turkey, instead of that, people uh, be famous in TV shows first, then do oh, movies. Okay. okay. So, and, but TV shows, not digital platforms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in five years, I would like to be in TV shows first, mm -hmm. uh, make some fan base and make my name familiar to people. And after that, making right connections, I would like to support independent filmmakers yeah. Uh, yeah. to do something international and do something for the festivals all around the world. Yeah. Because I believe that Turkey has a lot of powerful, powerful stories to yeah. tell people all around the world, but we're not able to tell much because the independent filmmakers are not supported much. And we see the same stories all the time on the TV and the box office movies as well. Okay. But my, my question would be, do you think film has a responsibility of actually showing how a place is like in america before i came to turkey the only thing i knew about turkey was what i saw in the movies right and i know yeah. and now being here it's it's not it's not accurate so yeah. do you think film has a responsibility to somehow get it right uh not all the time but it mostly because for example you've seen how Turkey looks in Hollywood movies yes. and definitely not like that. For example, if you're showing uh, a story of Turkish ghetto, definitely you can show some, you know, yeah. uh, low income places. Yes. But if you like to show something in Turkey for general, you have to uh, show different kind of Turkey. But uh, for example, in Taken, in Skyfall, Turkey right. looks crazy. It's not yes. like that. Yes. See how Grand Bazaar seems in Skyfall, but it's not like that in uh, reality. I think uh, not all the time, but mostly uh, it has a responsibility to show how the place actually like. Yeah. yeah. But it's all about the stereotypes in Hollywood, I guess, because still for Hollywood, Turkey is like a Middle Eastern country and all people are scarred. I don't know, uh, riding camels. Yeah. yeah. Some yeah, yeah. stereotypes like that. Yeah, it's Does not it, for only Turkey, I guess. It's it, the Hollywood has some uh, stereotypes for certain kind of places as well. For Eastern Europe, people think that there are still war and I don't know fighting battles going on in Eastern Europe. Yeah. Or uh, people always see Paris as I don't know romantic European city for I don't know honeymoon or something like that. Yeah. But I've been to Paris and it's definitely there are really dangerous or I don't know, dirty or complicated criminal places as well. But we never seen in Hollywood movies. We always see Eiffel, Champs Elysees Street. Does that does that upset you a little bit that Hollywood doesn't get it right all the time? Um, yeah, it kind of upsets for me as well. For example, uh, for for Los Angeles as well. Like I had really something different 
rather than the actual uh, Los Angeles on my mind before I was coming to LA. Mm -hmm. uh, it, they, they, they show Los Angeles pretty different rather than it, it is like. And I was really shocked when I, when I came to Los Angeles first. Yeah. 